God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of love. from heaven forgive our sins we pray hear our song hear our song as it was us to heaven Sins, we pray. Oh, 
Yes, Lord in heaven. This is our prayer this morning. May you hear us, O oh God, as we pray to you this morning. And may you forgive us our sins, O oh God, as we come before you this morning. If there's any hindrance, Lord, may you forgive us. May you forgive us, O oh God. Our desire is to know you, O oh God. Our desire is to see you, O oh God. Our desire is to know you more and more, O oh God. We are nothing without you, Lord. We need you. So, Heavenly Father, may you forgive us. And may you accept us, O God. May your will be done, O God, on earth as it's in heaven, King of glory. Not our own will, but may your will be done, O God. We surrender to your Lordship this morning. We surrender to you, our Father, Lord. May you forgive us. May you hear us, O God, that even as we continue to sit at your feet, that our prayers shall come to you and your will shall be done, O God. Thank you for bringing your children together this morning. And Lord, we thank you for our brothers and sisters who are following online. May you bless them wherever they are. May you minister to all of us this day. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you're all very welcome for this nine o'clock service. Turn to your neighbor, welcome your neighbor. Just greet someone next to you and make your neighbor to feel very welcome. It's always a joy to be together as a family, so we are happy to see you. You are all very important and you are welcome in the presence of God. It's a morning service, so we'll continue with the order of service. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his, for, his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service this morning. Brothers and sisters, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins to Almighty God, He is faithful and just. He will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I request that you be seated as we continue in prayer. I just invite you to take a moment of silence, reflect on your personal life as we come before the Lord. He is a loving God. He is a forgiving God. He loves us so much. That's why he gave us his only son, Jesus Christ. So let's confess our sins individually to him. Still in the mood of prayer, we shall join in that confessional prayer together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thoughts, word, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that may serve you newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is the seventh Sunday after Trinity, so may we all join in the collect and pray together. Who is the author and giver of all good things? Craft in our hearts the love for your name. Increase us through religion. Nourish us in all goodness and of all great mercy, 
Keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oh, Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. May we arise and join in the short form of Gloria. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and forever and ever. Amen. Once again, we'd like to welcome all of you. You are all very welcome for this 9 o'clock service. Our brothers and sisters who are outside kindly, you may come in. Uh, this morning, we are blessed to have Tim as of leading us. And we are blessed to have all of you. People's Word is here with his dear wife. The bishop is here, Bishop David. Thank you so much. And all of you, you are very, very welcome. And you are all important. So may God bless you as we continue to sit at his feet this morning. Let's open our hearts to receive from the Lord. Amen. The presence of God is here. I don't know what you've come with, but one thing I know is that God is in this place. And your burdens shall be lifted. Hallelujah. So let's join the choir as we worship the Lord. May God richly bless you. And to our brothers and sisters who are following online, may God minister to you wherever you are. Be blessed. Praise the Lord. Praise King Jesus. Uh -uh. I want you louder than that. Praise the Lord. He's worthy. Isn't God good? Just turn to your neighbor and give them a high five and tell them, give me some space. Today I want to dance for the Lord. Get some space. Are we ready to dance for Jesus?
bless you. We honor you, O God. You are the most high God. You reign above every other God. You reign above every other king. Lord, we wear your crown. And Father, we thank you for you are good. Father, we lay every other burden down today. We come before you to say that we lay every other crown down. The crowns of riches, the crowns of wealth, the crowns of jobs, the crowns of children, the crowns of spouses, every other thing in this world that we've lifted above you, we lay down today, oh God. Sing, oh, be lifted, say, oh, be lifted, above all other gods, above all other gods, we lay our crown, we lay our crown, sing, we lay our crown, and oh. worship, oh, be lifted, oh, be lifted, above all other gods, above all other gods.
Worship the Lord with a hand of wonderful hand of clap. With your own words, surrender to the Lord. With your own words, please take a minute and surrender it all to the Lord. You know your life. You know it better. And anything that has failed you to surrender, please do it now. Surrender it out and say, Lord, here, I am a failure. It may be your honor, the title you have has been higher than the Lord, please surrender. The money you have can divert you from seeing the Lord, please surrender. Let the money be below you, be below the Lord. Let whatever is in your life and on your life surrender to the Lord. So that you may start portraying the name of Jesus even when we walk. Even when you work in your office. Even when you teach the students in this, this university. Even when you walk to class. Surrender everything. Speak to him. He is your father. Even those online, please. Surrender. Surrender to the Lord. Surrender to him. Everything that you know has failed you, and he's able, he's able to make you what he wants you to be. Surrender everything. Lord, in your mercy, we want to give you, Lord, thanks for being in this country. And we want to lift up our country unto your throne. And even the other countries, Lord, around the world. That this country will portray the picture of your name as our motto goes. For God and my country. And even as our national anthem moves. That Lord, we shall not fail you. Uganda, may God uphold thee. That Lord, even in our political leadership we shall not fail you. And that's why I want to bring with you to your God and to your throne the president of this country, His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. That Lord, you may use him. You may rule through him. And your will be seen on this, this country. Thank you God for giving him the power and the courage and the strength to say no to the superpowers of this world. We know that you are the most superpower. And instead of bending to them, he decided to bend to you. So may you continue to give him the strength and the courage to say no. Even those under him, O oh Lord, that they will say no. We want to bring all cabinet ministers to you that you will bless them. They, they may know why they are there. Every person would want to be them. But you chose them. May they know why you have elected them among many to be those in those titles, Lord, that they will seek your face. We want to lift up the church in this country. And mostly the church of Uganda. His grace, Dr. Kazimba, that Lord, you will bless him. And all bishops in this country. And all clergymen and women and most especially the chaplain of this chapel in this university that you bless her God even where she has gone for ministry continue to show your favor upon her life Thou that you bless us Lord to do your will we lift, we lift up the sick unto your throne that wherever they are even those amongst us allow them see your name and may you touch them with this your name it's above every name to which every sickness obeys. And I pray that they receive your healing as you promised, Lord, that we shall pray for the sick and they will be well. May they be well, even those in hospitals. Let them receive your touch, the touch of the name, the name of Jesus, the name of the Savior, the name of the healer, that they will be well. 
Bless our speaker this morning, God, your servant, Reverend Jesper, that he will speak from you. Anoint him with power, that, Lord, when he stands to speak, we shall see you. Thank you for accepting this, our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. And somebody shout a big amen. Shall we join the words of the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Somebody say amen. amen. May you take your seats please as we welcome this lady to take us through the word. Good morning, church. The reading of today is taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 2, starting from verse 4. The book of Daniel, chapter 2, starting from verse 4. Then the children said to the king, O king, live forever. Tell your servant the dream and we will show the interpretation. The king answered the children, The word from me is sure. If you do not make known to me the dream and its interpretation, you shall be torn limb from limb and your houses shall be laid in rains. But if you show the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me the gifts, the rewards, and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and its interpretation. They answered the second time. Let the king tell his servants the dream and will show its interpretation. The king answered, I know with certainty that you are trying to gain time because you see that the word from me is sure that if you do not tell me the dream, there is but one sentence for you. You, sh you have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the times change. Therefore, tell me the dream and I shall know that you shall, that you know, it, you shall tell me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king, there is not a man on earth who can meet the king's demand, for no great and powerful king has asked, has asked such a thing of any magician or encounter or Chaldean. The, king, the thing that the king asks is difficult, and none can show it to the king except the gods who dwelling not with the flesh. Because of this, the king was very angry and furious and commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be destroyed. So the decree went forth that the wise men were to be slain, and they sought Daniel and his companions to slay them. Then Daniel replied with prudence and decretion to Ariok, the captain of king's guard, who had gone out to slay the wise men of Babylon. He said to Ariok, the king's captain, why is the decree of the king so severe? Then Ariok made the matter known to Daniel. Daniel went in and besought the king to appoint him a time and he might show to the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made, and made the matter known to Ananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, his companions, and told them to seek mercy of God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the mystery was revealed 
to Daniel in a vision of the night. Then Daniel blessed the Lord of heaven. Daniel said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. To whom belong wisdom and might, he changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to those, to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and mysterious things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells in him. To thee, O God of my fathers, I give thanks and praise for thou hast given me wisdom and strength and has now made no known me what we asked for thee, for thou hast made known to us the king's matter. Brethren, receive the word of God. Let us give more hands to the word of God. Praise the Lord. Yeah, good morning, church. How are you? Praise the Lord. Yeah, uh, our chaplain, the Reverend Dr. Lida Shutaimba, is not with us this morning. Anyway, the whole day, she went to minister at Church of the Resurrection of Gorobi. So remember her in your prayers as she ministers. These are the announcements for today. We always have a baptism, baptism services. And our next baptism service is on the 20th of August at 11 o'clock service. And when we are having baptism on a Sunday, then we have teachings on a Thursday. So the, the teachings will happen on the 17th of August at 5.30 p.m. in this church. The second announcement concerns the mission to Guru. As part of the Northern Uganda Partnership activities, we as a church shall be having a mission with our partner church, Christ Church, Kansas. Guru, and this mission will happen on the 1st to 7th of August. Please pray for that mission team that is going. Oh, if you want to be part of that team, come and see the chaplain. The third announcement concerns Alabasta Ladies Conference. This is an annual conference that normally happens at All Saints Cathedral. It's a conference for ladies, especially single ladies. But if you are married also, you are a young lady, you can endeavor to join. It will benefit. It will happen on the 1st, 13th of August at All Saints Cathedral. In case you want more about that conference, please contact the the provost of All Saints Cathedral on this number. 0772463-3391. Or you contact a lady by the name of Diana. Not Reverend Diana, but she's also Diana. 0759 999 Two nine seven. Uh, the fourth announcement concerns the advocates Africa. It is the fifteenth by annual convocation. This conference is for Christian lawyers. So all Christian lawyers are invited for this conference between 26th and 30th of July, 2023. And it will be in Entebbe, Uganda. 
and is being organized by Uganda Christian Royals Fraternity. The fifth announcement concerns the Christian Women Fellowship. The Christian Women Fellowship are celebrating Mary Magdalene's, Mary Magdalene's Day and is going to happen on the 6th, 6th of August in the 11 o'clock service. On that day, there will be enrollment of new members. So if you are a woman and you would want to attend, this, this, this Christian Women Fellowship welcomes single ladies. You know Mother's Union is for those who are already married, but Christian women welcome single ladies. Please contact this number if you want to be enrolled and you'll be told the requirements. 0774-307-406. Contact Maureen Simomwe who is the chair. Then the, the other announcement concerns, this is just to remind us that July is a month of prayer. How many of us have been coming on Thursday for prayer? Put up your hand. I challenge those who have not been coming. Clap for those who have been coming, church. Please, if you have not been coming, this Thursday, coming Thursday, it is the last time we are meeting in July for prayer. So endeavor to come. It happens, begins at 5.30 p.m. and ends at 7.30 p.m. Reverend Jasper is going to talk to us about corporate prayer, how powerful it is. So I pray that many of you will come this Thursday. Then I also want to remind us that every Friday, which is not the, the first Friday of every month, we have a physical overnight. But every Friday of the month, we have what we call virtual night of prayer. We pray together on Zoom. And on this 25th of July, please log in and pray with us. Uncle O used to say, a church that does not pray is what? A weak church. But a church which prays is, don't you want St. Francis to be a strong church? Food for thought. Uh, I also want to remind us that every day, rather every, from Monday to Friday, from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., we have what is called morning glory. We meet here, we read the word of God, we also pray together as a church. Please be part of it. Praise the Lord. And I want to take this opportunity to welcome our preacher. Our preacher this morning is the Reverend Jasper Tumuhimbise. Reverend Jasper Tumuhimbi say, I, I had an opportunity of serving with him when he was serving at All Saints Cathedral. And he used to call me bishop. <laughs> Perhaps <laughs> that will come to pass. Anyway, yes, Reverend Jasper now, <laughs> and he was my chaplain. <laughs> Reverend Jasper now serves at... Um, uh, sorry, serves at the province. He will tell us more about his ministry there. But Reverend Jasper comes from Kabale. He's a Muchiga like me. And <laughs> yes, clap <now> for that. <laughs> yes, Reverend Jasper is married. Reverend Jasper is a Sarongo. Clap for that. And Reverend Jasper is a man of his word. So, Reverend Jasper, you are welcome, and may the Lord use you mightily as you minister to God's people. Before he comes, we shall have 
uh, skit. But, but do you know that we, are, we have been selfish in this company? Uh, ah, no. Imagine for the last two years that we've been working only two people in the whole company. Oh, yeah, we need to do something. Hey, good morning, church. Good morning, church. And praise God. Oh, you're most welcome. So, Over to you, sir. Uh, you members, we, we want your help in this thing. We are at a point of recruiting new staff <laughs> for our company. And we would like to help us in selecting the best candidate to fill these positions. Please be vigilant about this. Uh, the first candidate, please come. Make sure that you observe each and everything. Yes. Yes. Uh, Good morning, madam. Good morning, sir. How are you, madam? I'm fine, So, sir. feel comfortable and talk about yourself. Me? Yes, you. My name is Chom Pule, Chom Hendo Pule, and uh, I come from Kabare, deep, deep down, after Bugonji Kakumo, after those deep villages, deep, deep, deep. Okay. Uh, where they don't put on shoes. Mm. Then me, this is my first pair, and first time to come in Kampala. And uh, I saw very many big trees, and when I was in the bus, did you pray before coming? Pray? No, yeah. I came when I was seated in the bus. Okay. Yes. So, uh, what do you think makes you qualify for this position? Yeah. I am the first born at home mm -hmm. out first of ten born. children. So, I follow, no, I lead as others follow. Mm. So, if you give me the job, I will lead as others follow. And besides, I have been working in gardens in Kabare from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. And that is digging. So okay. if you give me this job, I can work when I'm Pure, 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 That's yes, enough. Sir. Can we have your credentials? This, this one is my certificate from Chaba Kabare mm -hmm. Technical Institute. Yes. And uh, this one is my PhD certificate okay. from Kondoro no Kora. Yes. And uh, I was the best with 30 Okay. Elements. Hurry up. Yes. And so, do you, do you have one. any question for, for us? No, sir. Okay. No question for us. Uh -uh. Great. Okay. We will call you. Okay. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you, sir. Mm, okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay. okay. Thank so you, sir. You can go back. Can go. Yes. Thank you, sir. Chomu Second candidate. Chomu Hendo Pure from yes. Kamari. Yeah. This is me. Okay. Yes, good morning. Good morning, sir. How yes, are you? Yes, good morning, young man. Go ahead. How are you? Fine, fine. How are you? So feel free and talk about yourself. Um, actually, yeah, true. Uh, my name is Bruce. Okay. And, um, I'm a son of Professor Magala, sir. Okay. And um, the, one of the MDs was at my home last evening. Okay. And he told me there is an interview. That's why I never applied. So Okay. Okay. I've, I've just come. Okay. Where are your credentials? What do you mean? Can Academic you know, what papers. Makes you for the job? Uh, what makes me qualify is uh, maybe I should first remind you that uh, my father is one of the founders of this company. Okay. And um, I have a bachelor's degree from Makere University and other international degrees, like four. And uh, I have experience of working in the Ministry of Local Government for 10 years. So I feel me being in your company is doing you a favor. OK. And uh, it will be of an advantage to you. OK. Thank you very much. You said you're the son of Professor Magara? Sir. Okay. Professor Magara, sir. Do you, do you remember him? The lecture of econometrics. Hey. Yeah, he was so, our lecture uh, of econometrics, man, yes. Do you have any question for us? 
Uh, do you give water to your candidates who come for interview? But, but anyway, did you pray before coming? Or do you know God? In the name? It's okay. You go. We wish you all the best. We we'll wait for the call. No, don't wish me the best. Just call me. Okay. okay. You've heard. Third candidate. Third candidate. Yes, madam. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Make yourself comfortable and talk about yourself. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Liliana Sima. I'm a teacher by profession. I have worked in the Ministry of Education as a general, self, general secretary mm. for 10 years. I have experience in teaching for 25 years. I hold a bachelor's degree from McKenna University. Mm. I have a PhD from Oxford University. Mm. So when you called for, when you advertised, I felt I am really Okay, can we have a look at your academic documents? Okay. Harvard University, this is one. Bachelor's from my care. You've studied. <laughs> All these certificates, okay. All right, do you have any questions for us? Okay, all right. Thank you so much for expressing interest. And we wish you the best of luck. Uh, by the end of tomorrow, our secretary will be able to get back to you if you qualify. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay. So, you've seen the first one, Chomo Hendo Pure from Kavari. The second one was the son to the professor. This one from uh, no, Oxford. Oxford. So maybe if you ask these people, so, they can also tell us the person who has qualified uh, for that job. Assuming you are on this, this table, who qualifies for this job? Okay. <laughs> and uh, it is in the same way, church, that how we appear before the Lord is what determines our prayers to him. It's Yeah, I mentioned to the morning service that Tom would take it. <laughs> she really needs a job. <laughs> mm, I mean, <laughs> and you are a good answer as what? Prayers. Good morning again. They mentioned I'm just but to Mhimbi, say, by the grace of God, I was uh, at Makere University early 90s. So you can calculate my age. And. Um, <laughs> From 90 to 93, together with Peter, Kathy, and others, we were serving in this chapel. It was a wooden seven o'clock service. And uh, I was telling the morning service, that was, I mean, service was very serious. You come very early, you give a book, question, and modern, people come and sit, no greeting, then they go back home, and that would be the trend. Today, we have machines to help us. We have many things that we do. And because of that, we take life for granted. Things come, and you know, worship experience is so nice. And sometimes we miss the issue of prayer. Dependence on God. And I was telling the morning service that, you know, you sleep, you get up, you go into the vehicle, come, worship, go back. And there is no sense of urgency in the prayer. Why? Because everything is like in auto what? Autopilot. This morning, I'm going to give you bad news. That life is not autopilot. Life is totally different. And the moment you take life as autopilot, then you don't need a God. And so the question is, if you have food, do you pray for food? 
if your bank accounts are full of money, do you pray for school fees? If you have the clothes you, you need, not like chomu, one shoe, and it is the first one, do you really pray for clothes? Or you just simply give thanks if you remember? And that's the challenge of prayer today. So we are going to talk about effective prayer. And in talking about it, we shall know that the definition of prayer simply is communication to the divine. You are communicating to somebody higher than you. And how you communicate depends on the circumstances that are around you. If you have no job, I can assure you, I took one year without a job. My prayer life was perfect. Bible reading, yeah, I mean, finish it. I finished once with reading the Bible once a year, but that time I would finish it around six months. Why? Because I'm actually encountering God in my what? In my situation. And sometimes, therefore, circumstances will hit you for you to return to God. Let me repeat this. Because people think that grace means uh, autopilot. No. Most of it, God will send circumstances to you to help you turn and reflect that if it is not God, then communication to God. Then secondly, Paul encourages us to pray without what? Seizing. First Thessalonians 5.17. Praying without ceasing. In other words, there is no time for no prayer. No. If it is not thanksgiving, it is a petition, it is not a petition, it can be a request, but we need to pray without ceasing. Is your life patterned around prayer without ceasing? A scripture, James chapter 5 and verse 17. It says, Elijah was a man just like us, a man just like us. And in 1 Kings chapter 17, Verse 1, he went to Ahab and he prayed that it would not rain. It never rained for three and a half what? years. A man just like us. I was asking God, what do you mean by actually writing this? Elijah was a man just like us. So you are an Elijah, you are an Esther, you are a Deborah. You are able to pray and things do what? Happen. The Bible says he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its what? Crops. A man just like us. So effective prayer is inviting you to be a person just like Elijah, Elisha, and the people of the Bible who did exploits. And among the people who did exploits, we have Daniel, a man who used to pray. In fact, when you read Daniel chapter 5, among the allegations to Daniel, it wasn't corruption. It wasn't anything to do with adultery or debauchery. It was to do with his God. That you can only choose Daniel that he prays. And therefore, if you want to trap Daniel, you trap a prayerful man. And I pray this morning that one of us will come out and you know that we can be like Elijah, we can be like Daniel, we can be like Esther, like Ruth, like Peter and John. Now, Peter and John never went to Makerere University of Jerusalem, no. They were fishermen. But the Bible says they turned the world, what? Upside down. Prayer will turn the world upside down. They begin wondering, is this the other village, Chomu, from Bugonji? You get it. Why? Because prayer is effective. And when you pray, God moves. So let's turn our Bibles to what was read to us in Daniel chapter 2. And as we reflect on this, please note the following. Number one is the problem. The problem. And in fact, I mentioned it as the problem of prayer. That the problem today is that we are in autopilot, but when things are tough, you will pray. Whether you are in theist, whether you know God, whether you are a Christian or what, whatever religion is, when things are tough, you pray. I read a small missive from 
from the World War II. There was a captain who was saying, there is no God. In fact, if he's there, let him now come. And then a bomb came. And then they entered the foxhole, and he said, oh, oh my God, they almost killed us. Then the private said, Captain, you are saying, oh my God, but you are saying there is no God. Then he responded, and I quote, young man, if death comes, there is a what? There is a God. And so some of us, we wait for circumstances that will drive us to what? Towards God. Chapter 2, the problem. This is a young man. He's taken into exile, and he's young. And the first thing they would do is to castrate them. And I was imagining a person, a young person, castrated. No children. So you'll never get the DNA of Daniel. No. For men who are here and you are struggling with, you, with your children and what? DNA, forget. Daniel was castrated. That was it. That you become an eunuch so that you are not able to reproduce any child in the king's palace. I'm young. I'm castrated. That's one problem. Secondly, they changed their names. Number three, they also told them the culture of Babylon. Then number three, they were living with a tyrant, a tyrant called Nebuchadnezzar. Chapter four and verse 12. Chapter four, verse 12. The king was so angry and furious and he ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. So the problem was execute everybody. Kill. And I can assure you we are all candidates of death. The enemy, the devil, roams around like a what? A rolling lion looking for whom he may devour. And if you read the New Testament church, that's the Acts chapter 12. One of the things the devil did was they beheaded James and then he arrested Peter, and it was after Passover, he would be what? Beheaded. But the church began what? Praying. The church was driven to prayer because of circumstances what? around. So look around you from your childhood. Don't you think you need to be like these people? But some of us, of course, uh, in the book of Lamentations, they took me to exile, they castrated me, what and what. Let me tell you, that won't change the death sentence. Nebuchadnezzar had already declared that this made the king so angry and furious and ordered execution. What was the problem? This man dreams and tells people, interpret my dream, I won't tell you. Now, all wise men were like, general, Please tell us the dream we shall interpret. Please go home and read. The Bible says, he said, no, I know. If I tell you, then you will what? Interpret. Of course, you will forge. And I can't know the forgery. Now, you must tell me the dream. At the same time, interpret it. And they said, nobody on earth can do it. But I thank God, as we shall see later, there is somebody in heaven who can interpret. Because... He brings the dream, but also enables people to interpret those dreams. So, there is a death sentence. And this sentence was for every wise person. Verse 13. So, the decree was issued to put the wise men to death. And, and men were sent to look for who? For Daniel and his friends to put them to death. So, calling Daniel was not for fellowship. It wasn't for a church service. It wasn't for a prayer word session. It was bring your head. Now, this asks a big question. If you knew you were to be killed, how would your prayer life be? In fact, some of us would pray to death. You know, you pray and the heart pumps and you go to heaven before they extrude you. But this is it. The circumstances around Daniel were so tough. Come and we kill you. What hurt me is in verse 14. That actually he was to be killed for what he didn't know. Verse 14. When Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, had gone to put to death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. 
he asked the officer, why did the king issue this harsh decree? So this man is to be killed, but he doesn't, you know. And many of us, of course, are in the spiritual game. We don't know that the devil has already targeted you, and you are simply sleeping. You get up, you sleep, you get up, you sleep. In the garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus was about to die, he left people to pray, please tarry with me. He came, found them doing what? Sleeping. <laughs> How long do you sleep? Some people even sleep in the church. Okay. You get it. Why? Because they do not know that the decree is already what? Issued. And this decree was to Daniel and all his what? Friends. People who are in exile, as if that's not bad enough, castrated, not bad enough, and then marked for death. The problem. Esther, a young girl, married a tyrant king, Zexas. And let me tell you, this man made a party for 180 days. Esther chapter 1. A party for 180 what? days. Some of you make parties for two hours and we meet for six months. For him, he made a party for what? Six months continuous. Eat and drink. The stupid woman, Vasta, the wife, joined the parties. Called all women. Party, party, party. After party. <laughs> and then I'm a young girl. I am an orphan. I am a lying among those whom we will sleep with if you are not satisfied, become a concubine. But thank God I passed through. But the Bible says for two months, you don't even call me like your wife. And Esther chapter 4 verse 15 to 16 says, please pray so that I go to this king. If I die, let me what? Die. That's a wife, my friend. And sometimes for us, we haven't reached that level. But I pray that God does not bring those circumstances so that you begin knowing that you are actually marked for what? For death. And so, these people are marked for death. It is a big problem. But there is a response. And the response has three things. Number one, friends. Verse 17. Daniel doesn't go and say, okay, let me pray. Oh, doesn't lament. Now, God, you know, I'm coming soon. No. He prays. But then also requests friends. So the first item is that there is individual prayer, but also corporate. Verse 17, let's read it together. Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Misael, and Azariah. He had the friends. And I was asking the morning service, who is your friend? Whom do you pray with when things are tough? Whom do you call? And I want to tell you this morning, instead of going to the phone, who, 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 go to the throne. Instead of going to the world, go to the word. Instead of going to Google, go to God. You Google what causes these items <laughs> and <laughs> effects of this medicine. And I normally go but I normally did it. Why? Because I know my God. So there was a problem, and he had friends. Again, the question is, whom do you run into when you are in trouble? I was telling the morning service that as a reverend, I have two reverends, and I run into them, we shall pray. But as a man, a husband, I have seven other husbands whom we meet every Friday in order to pray for our heart, our marriages, and children. But even as a person, a Christian, I have two people in this university. We meet to pray in the small offices, but we have friends. So who is your friend? I'm going to ask you, even this, that you have friends who will stand with you in case of what? In case of storms. Then the other thing was to ask for more time. In verse 18, uh, in verse 16, let's read verse 16 together. He asked for more time. At this, Daniel went in to the king and asked for what? For time. So that he might interpret the dream. And I can assure you, each one of us, God gave us how many hours? 24 hours a day. If you have lesser hours, please come for prayer and deliverance. Because 
each one of us, how many? 24 hours. But look at us. 24 hours doing what? I was mentioning the first service that I have tried to divide it. And I got it from my uncle. Eight hours rest, eight hours work, eight hours in the word of God or in the ministry of what? Or in the ministry of God. Yes, I falter, but I try to do that. Why? So that I get time to pray. So let me ask you, do you have time to pray? Is there a time when you say, uh -uh, I will get up and pray? Of course, I'm not talking about theology. No, no, no. I'm not talking about theology. Because theology will interpret this, this. I'm talking about prayer because God orders us to do what? To pray. And in fact, disciples, you know what they asked Jesus? Teach us to pray, not how to what? Not how to pray. You read Matthew chapter 6 and then Luke chapter 11. It is teach us to pray. So they knew that Jesus used to do what? To pray. In fact, by excellence, if you read chapter 6 of Luke, verse 12, Jesus even had overnight. And here we are calling for overnight. See? Okay? He had an overnight. And he, he, he was the son of God. He was God, but he had a pattern of prayer. So I pray that God will also give you time to do what? To pray. Not this business of saying amen when you're already in the vehicle. Have time. Don't rush. Switch off TV. And by the way, it is not as easy as I'm saying it. Because ah, we want to watch news. Again, news will come. We want to watch Manchester United. Again, you can see the results. And by the way, for, even if you watch, you won't change anything. Amen? Yeah, I mean, you won't. Hey, suck that coach. Just keep quiet. Go to sleep. They won't suck that coach because you are saying it from Uganda. No. But I want to propose to you, have that time for what? For prayer. This morning I was praying. And before I came, I asked my wife, please, Touch me and pray. And she did. You know why? Because we purposefully pray. The conditions around us are what? Are tough and we know it. So there is the issue of time. And then the issue of the request. Verse 18. What was the request? The request is as follows. He urged them to pray. Let's read it together because... This is the God's word. He urged them to plead for the mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery. That this is tough, but may the God of heaven intervene. My friend, that's what we call effective prayer. That you are not depending on our wisdom. You are depending on the God of heaven to interpret the word, the situation. And I was saying the morning service giving them a testimony that I had a sick wife of quite some time, arthritis, rheumatism, that disease, I know the name, but I hate it. And it was tough, but let me tell you, that time I used to pray. You know why? Because I never wanted her, one, to die. Number two, I was in ministry and asking God, how can you allow me to enter ministry? And then the next thing you are appointing me to be a widower. And it was real. But also I prayed for the grace to manage. Grace to manage means you come to church, you are supposed to smile. You get it? I mean, smile, laugh, when you attend my party. The grace to go through the northern bypass. Those days, jam was made in hell. Then in Ansana, jam made in Gehenna. Then to reach home and you are bathing your wife and what? That grace, my friend, and you are not collapsing, I can assure you, I urge God for that grace. And many people stood with us and I saw God working. And so, it is not the absence of sickness, the absence of problems, but for you to urge people to pray with you. Esther did the same thing. Let's fast three days and three what? Three nights, let me tell you. And she added the last verse in that chapter that if I perish, let me what? Perish. But I should be prayer. And so I want to commission you today that because of circumstances around you, in your family, even in your body, 
you'll be able to be commissioned to pray, to urge people to ask for God's what? Intervention. And so, where do you run to when things are tough? The purpose of prayer. So he has people to pray with him. Let me go to now the purpose of prayer. Verse 18. Verse 18. The first purpose is preservation. Preservation that I don't want to die. Okay, I was studying the morning service again. Let's read it. He asked them to plead for the mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that might not be executed and the rest of wise men for bad wrong. So it begins with me. I don't want to die, but also my family and my friends and all wise men of Babylon. So, there is something you need to learn that many people will depend on your prayer. Many people will depend on your prayer. So, if you are not praying, what are they depending on? Our families depend on our what? Individual prayers. So if we are praying, then what? That they may not die preservation. And I can assure you, I know where I'm going. I'm going to heaven. I told the morning service, I'm not in a hurry. May I pray that I may not what? Die. Full stop. I pray that my wife will not die. My children. And let me give this illustration here. We have a daughter, she got a problem in senior five, the third term. She began falling down, and the whole right side was what? Medically paralyzed, physically paralyzed. In fact, they would touch, touch her, nothing. Even if you pinched her, she couldn't feel anything. From Barara, ambulances, what? We bring her to Kampala, they check no disease. We began praying. Then she went back to school, same condition, back to Kampala, Murago, wherever. So one time when she had come for medication and had come from church, I was, you know, resting. I normally rest after church, so you can imagine normally after preaching, please don't call. But anyway, I would have switched off. So I was resting and my wife rests and says she's down. She's dying. And I go, I see foam on the mouth. Our daughter was dying. And by the way, we have one daughter and three boys. So you can imagine what is taking place in your head. And I said, I said, let me go to pray more. I went to pray. My wife, I told her, call the ambulance. The ambulance came. And that's when I began seeing Uganda, you see, driving in front of ambulances. Uh, I wish I had the capacity to throw them into the river. But we reached IHK and they checked nothing and Reverend I in actually that they came and prayed with us. We continued in the prayer, but to cut a long story short, urging people to what? To pray for God's intervention. Medically speaking, there was nothing that we were seeing. But again, to cut a long story short, the, <coughs> the issue was that she dreamt an angel coming, telling her, Elizabeth, what are you doing here? Then she said, I am sick. <laughs> the angel said, get out. So she got up, told the mommy near the bed that, mommy, somebody in the white has told me that I need to get out. And she said, it is a dream. She goes back, the same person comes, asks, Lisa, what are you doing here? God doesn't change what questions. If the circumstances are the same, ask Elijah, First Kings chapter 19, Elijah, what are you what doing here? God doesn't change the what the message. She said, I'm sick, get out. So in the morning, I go to check on them, and then when I reach, she says, Hey, Daddy, two dreams, okay, that we should check out. And we told the doctors we are checking out. Doctors were like, if you take her and anything happens, never bring her here again. I said, yes. Let's get out. Because the order was from 
So who am I to disobey the order? So, and as, as we were parking, she said, there's a young girl there. Please go and pray for her. I went. I was in Kora, and then the man said, me, I'm Catholic. I said, no, I haven't come for Catholic, Anglican. I have come to pray. And the girl, I prayed for her. The stomach was bulging, and I gave her 50,000 with my card that God will intervene, that God will intervene. So we went out. She went back to school. Problems continued. The school said, no more. We do not want her here. We went to the ministry with the help of some of you, and we got a letter. You don't chase my daughter over what? We don't chase our daughter over sickness, no. And she did her exams using the what? The left hand. And they would add her some minutes. 16 aggregates out of, not points, no. 16 points out of the maximum of 20. And God did what? Intervene. So, and you see, we can't even know how he will intervene. It is his glory, his honor. You'll come to it slightly later. But I want to tell you, for every situation, please pray. She goes for a law course, then she begins writing with the right up to today. When did this change? I don't know and I don't care. Because there is a God in what? There is a God in heaven. And he wiped away all our what? All our tears. And so, when somebody says, don't you pray, you can imagine what I think about that person. So this is not about theology. It is about your testimony. It is not about the Bible verses you can quote. It is about God doing his work. So the purpose is that we may not die. That we may not die. Secondly, Revelation, verse 22, quickly. Verse 22 is interesting because it says that he reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. Revelation. So do you want to know about your life? Please pray. Go into his word. The marks of the New Testament church are four. Number one, the word. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. The word that they continued in the doctrine of the apostles. Secondly, koinonia, the fellowship, that they continued meeting, but some of us don't meet. Then breaking of bread, that's the cross of Christ. Then number four is prayer. So if you want revelation about the nation, about your life, about your job, please do what? Pray. The God who knows the deep secrets of every man will actually reveal. And so can I tell you, I have got many things regarding my life and my family through what? Through prayer. I read the word I pray, and God will reveal. Even the sickness. No, he will tell you why things are what? Happening, and we'll be able to give you the grace to sail through. Number three, quickly. Praise be to God. Verse 20. Everything that God does, it is for his what? For his glory. And he said, praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. That's it. That bottom line, it is about God. That is his glory that I'm alive. It is his glory that you are able to come and sit here. Not your glory. Especially for some of us who come from villages. Electricity is God is what? Glory. This electricity, oh, I saw it in the P5. You imagine, do they put paraffin? What? How do they? Why? Because you are using it paraffin and literal paraffin. But now, in fact, when I was going to Kabale, I'm talking about God's glory. I asked my elder brother, how do people take clothes on those wires? Me, I thought wires for electricity are for what? Drying clothes. And then he said, I think they put a ladder in the morning and then evening they remove. But his glory has brought us to sit with what? 
with his kings and princesses. His glory has made us speak English. Ooh, English was what? <laughs> his glory has made us come to preach in St. Francis. <clears throat> Kampala, it was a matter of prayer and fasting. But now, <laughs> our children have grown up in where? In Kampala, it is his glory. Buying a pant and underwear. Senior two and only one. You get it. <laughs> this university entered three <laughs> browsers and two, two what? <laughs> two trousers. Browsers, for us, we never knew the difference between a browser and a shirt. <laughs> and it is his glory today that I can go into the wardrobe and begin picking what clothes. My friend, if you can't thank God for what he has made you today, then remember it has been his what? His grace. And I had one who saw in you, it. Can't life was okay. You get it. It is his glory. It is his honor. It is his power. As I conclude. So whatever, when God answers the prayer, please testify. It is about what? God, not about pastor, not about prayer mountain processes. Finally, and as I conclude, our God is able. Our God is able. The product of prayer. The product of prayer. We shall read from verse 26 to verse 28. Then I end. What does the Bible say? The king asked Daniel, also called Bethesda, are you able to tell what I saw in my dream and interpret it? Verse 27, Daniel replied, no, he failed exams. I mean, I want interpretation. Somebody is saying I am before you, but I don't you know. No, I'm not able to interpret. And that has a very serious implication. Then what are you doing? In fact, if the Bible ended there, I think Daniel's head would have gone. But thank God it doesn't end there. And he continues that none is able to interpret. Verse 28. Pull it out. I want us, all of us, to read it. That it is not by man, it is not by power, it is not by any spirit, but by God. David knew it when Goliath taunted them, that I'm not coming to you using scold. I'm coming to in the name of the what? Of the Lord. Joseph knew it. Pharaoh asks him, that are you able to interpret the dream? Joseph said, no. Eh, he was like Daniel. But there is a God who does. Let's read this as we come towards the cross. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. Prayer was, please pray that God will reveal. Answer is, there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. There is a God in heaven. And how do I know there is a God? Even coming here, there is a God. I was telling the morning service that for me to be speaking today, there is a what? There is a God. And that's how I got saved. 1990, 31st December, a, 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 a what? A soldier was joking with a grenade and it burst out and it hit me here. And I used to be called a ninja. Do you know ninjas? The ninja was going to die. And for me, I knew I would go to where? To hell. I mean, clearly. And I cried to God. I mean, I never wanted to die. Because I was the second graduate in the village. My uncle had come in 72. I was the second one in that village, 1990. You get it? And then the graduate was whew, dying. And I was dying. And then they took me in a helicopter gun. It is a stretcher. This local stretcher carried by four Bachiga men. And they moved me to take me to 40 kilometers away. There is a God. I cried. I said, I don't want to die. I switched off after five kilometers. We got a vehicle, went to Kavali. There was end of year party. 
by doctors, so there was no doctor to work on me. And they got a drunkard who came, stitched me, <laughs> and at night I would hear people talking, you know, in this subconscious. It is a grenade, please go and make it a grave. That grave is still empty. 33 years ago, because there is a God. When I was found myself alive, I said, I'm saved now. 311, those days we had 311, and I became ordained. And from that day to day, I know there is a God. When I came to Murago, they found that he, inside the ribs there were two shrapnels, small fragments. And the doctor said, ah, we shall not operate you, just be moving. I think they will come out. I don't know whether they came out or not. <laughs> but what I know is that there is a God. <laughs> and when I'm passing through the airport, the airport doesn't say, titi. So I think either things moved out or not. But what I'm saying, there is a what? A God. Before we pray, this girl goes to Kumi, and I get a call after like three months. Father, I was healed, I was healed, I was healed. They are a man. She spoke in what? At a sort. I said, who are you? Yeah, you gave us a card and 50,000 in international hospital. I'm the other girl. This simple English. But I knew there is a what? There is a God. And therefore, the God of Daniel, the God of Esther, is your God. Let's stand and pray. And as we pray, as we pray, I do not know your circumstances. I do not know, even now, what is inside your body. But I want to tell you, there is a God. And so, Father, I pray for each of these, my brethren, that like Daniel, like Esther, like Deborah, like Ruth, like Peter and John, Mary and Martha, they will be able to stand and they will be able to intercede. Make them prayer warriors, O oh Lord. Appoint them and commission them that whatever they decree on earth will be decreed in heaven and that like Elijah, they will be able to do exploits. They will declare seasons and seasons will change. They will be able to pray over the sick and in your name they will be healed. They will be able to drive out demons because that's the authority you give those whom you love. And so may God appoint you. May God appoint you. May he direct your path so that from today, through prayer and petitions, you will change many nations beginning with you. And so thank you, Lord, for commissioning us to be a praying church. Thank you, Lord, for making now people a people who will pray and will change nations in your name. And so through your prayers, may nations change, may tribes change. May you be able to be like a tree planted by the water side that you will yield the fruit in a season and out of season, and that you'll be able to see the living God in the land of the living. I thank you, my Father, because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a redeemer. Somebody say amen. Please put up your hands together. As you keep standing, there could be a situation that is around you and you don't know the answer.
Daniel was asked a question by the king. Can you interpret the dream? What was the answer? What was the answer? But in 28, he said there is one. I am connected to one who is able. Somebody shout amen. I am connected to one who is where? Who is where? If you have that situation in your life, please come and we pray together. If you have a situation you know is around you, is above you, is even failing you to do what you can, come in front and we pray together. There is one who is able and his name is his name is perhaps the sickness and you don't know the answer and, and Reverend Jesper has said when his daughter got that dangerous disease and saw the angel twice he said I have to obey the angel Amen there is only one who is able to see and do what no one of us can do. And his name is Jesus and he's there for you. He has promised that when we pray, amen, he will do what? He will answer. Dr. Alson, come ahead and pray for these people. Akuna mungu kama wewe Akuna Baba hakuna Kweli hakuna Yesu hakuna Baba hakuna mungu kama wewe Ewe mungu wa Yutwa sema Asa Yesu twa sema Asa Baba twa sema Asa Ewe mungu wa Baba twa sema Asa Kweli twa sema Baba twa sema asante Ewe mungu wa gu wewe ni Baba wewe ni Afana omega Yesu wewe ni Afana omega Ewe mungu wa kweli wewe ni Yesu wewe ni Alpha na Omega Baba wewe ni Alpha na Omega Ewe Mungu wa Gu twa sema Asante Yesu twa sema Asante Mwamba twa sema Asante Father, we do thank you that you are the only God. You are the most high God. There's no one like you. And you have reached down from heaven, from your throne, through your son, Jesus Christ, and given us access to you. Father, we thank you that you are a God who hears. You are a God who sees you are not deaf and you are not blind. And you are a God who speaks. We know those things about you because you have revealed yourself to us and shown us that you are a living God, that you are not a dead God, but you are alive and active, enthroned. So, Father, now... We bring before you these, your sons and daughters, who with courage have stepped out of their seat 
and come before you. Father, receive this sign, these steps of courage as the cry of their heart to you. Receive their prayers. Hear them from heaven, Father, and answer the cry of their heart. Lord, they're looking for a miracle. They're looking around and they don't see any way forward. But you are a God that knows. You are a God that sees. And so we come before you and we plead your mercy. And we ask you in each of their situations that you would make a way where there seems to be no way and that after today, those who have seen them come forward and they see how you walk in their life, all the glory would go back to you. And it would be a testimony to your greatness and to your power that you are the one and only God, King of kings, Lord of lords, above all others. There's no one greater than you, and you have given us access through your son, Jesus Christ. We say, Asante Baba. Thank you, Lord. There's no one like you. And Father, we can't wait to see what you're going to do in these, the lives of your children. We can't wait to see how you are going to work things out for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Of thanks to God. Just go back marching and thanking God. Baba toa sema asa te ewe mungu Kweli toa sema Yesu toa sema Kweli toa sema asa te ewe mungu wa Shout amen We are now going to give to the Lord. Why? Because? So please get ready to give unto the Lord. Before I knew my name And washed before I knew my shame And all the Lamb was slain Before the earth was laid what an awesome price he paid And I owe it all All to Jesus All Every part of me Is lying at his feet And I owe it all let every breath I take rise to bring him praise to the glory of one day, Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus. Nail pierced hands. Nail pierced hands. hands are holding mine. A crown of thorns has freed my Thank you very much. We shall continue, but I would like to invite anyone with a special thanksgiving to come as we conclude the service. Time for thanksgiving. You have a reason to give thanks to the Lord, so we invite you.
to come as we conclude our service. The choir will sing. Upon this rock you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail when we bind and loose we proclaim your truth and in Jesus name we will not fail let's sing together upon this rock you will build your church and the gates of hell Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the grace you have given us, Lord, to give back to you this morning. May you accept these gifts, sanctified by the precious blood of Christ Jesus, and use it to serve your purpose, Lord, in your ministry, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. Father, we acknowledge that you have been at work in the lives of your people. By your grace, you have proved yourself faithful, Lord, at the moment when you people were going through difficult situations in life, you have proved to them that there is a God who intervenes in human affairs. So we thank you, Father King of glory, for your goodness and mercy upon their lives, Lord. Father, we thank you that you are at work in our lives, Lord, and you will continue to show them your goodness, Lord, in the life of the, on the, the, in the, in the life while they're still, at this time when they're still alive, Lord. And you will continue, Master King of Glory, to help them move on in life until when they reach their final destiny. We thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Before you go, before we receive the uh, benediction, just turn to your neighbor and say, may the peace of God be with you. Yes, turn to someone and say, may the peace of God be with you. We are brothers and sisters as we gather together. Beloved, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord sign his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give you peace in your hearts. May the Lord give you peace in your families. May the Lord give you peace at the place of work. May the Lord give you peace even as you get out of this place. May the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon all of you. And may this blessing be upon our brothers and sisters who have joined us online. May that blessing be upon this chapel and this university. May that blessing of God be upon all your plans for this new week.
And may that blessing of God rest upon our country, Uganda. And remain with all of us now and forever. We all say amen and amen. Thank you so much, my dear brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for coming. May God bless you. Uh, as we go out, let's appreciate all the ministers. All the ministers. Thank you so, so much. And we have young people who are behind the machines who are not seen. Let's appreciate them. And whatever happens here is because of them. We do appreciate your ministry. And in a very special way, I would like to say thank you to our people's warden. Thank you so, so much for your leadership. We don't take that for granted. Uh, may God bless you. And our dear Bishop, thank you so much for always being here. May God bless you all. Let's now have the recess of him. Have a fruitful week. God bless you. Enjoy the week. Remember to represent Christ wherever you are. Amen. Amen. Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly live on Jesus' name My hope is built on nothing less Than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly live on Jesus' name Oh, Christ the soul in broke I said All of the ground is sinking set All of the ground is oh, Christ sinking set Oh, Christ the soul in broke I said All of the ground is sinking set All of the ground is sinking set is a lovely place I rest on His unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale My echo holds within His veil When darkness fails His lovely face I rest on His unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale My echo holds within His veil Oh, Christ the soul in rock I said All of the ground is sinking set All of the ground is sinking set Oh, Christ the soul in rock I said All of the ground is sinking set All of the ground is sinking set He's off his garbage Yeah.